Hey everyone. everyone, we're Nick and Rachel. And if you've been following our adventures for the past year, you'll know that you can normally find us vlogging our trip around the world. But today's video is going to be a little bit different. As we've traveled through so many different countries, we've noticed that some things are a little bit different than they are back home in Canada and the UK. The reason that we have this channel is to share our experiences in the hopes of inspiring others to travel more. But we do understand that for certain countries it may be very, very different to what you're used to. With that, we're wanting to share with you some tips and tricks that we picked up along the way for each of the countries that we visited. That way, if you wish to go to any of the same places, then you'll be armed to the teeth with good knowledge to make your trip that bit smoother. Today's video is going to focus on Jordan. If you've been watching our other videos, then you'll know that we went to Amman, which is the capital, the Dead Sea, Petra, and Wadi Rum. A lot of the tips and tricks are going to focus on the country as a whole, but some of them will be very specific to each of the individual cities that we visited. We hope you find them useful. For anybody that's coming into the country of Jordan and they've looked at visa requirements, then you'll know that actually it's pretty expensive to get a Jordanian visa. However, because of the fact that they really want to increase tourism, then what they have actually decided to do is they've created something called the Jordan Pass. Now, with the Jordan Pass, you pay a certain amount depending on the length of stay that you want to be in Jordan. And rather than making you pay separately for the visa, they waive that fee altogether and also include entrance to a huge number of the major sites that you'll want to visit while you're in the country, which actually does encompass the four places that we ended up going and ended up being phenomenally useful. However, there are some caveats. The first is that it's only eligible if you're gonna be staying more than four days in the country. So just bear that in mind. The other thing is that you have to make sure that you have bought the Jordan Pass in advance of your trip. You cannot just buy it on arrival. So if you want to avoid a nasty surprise, then it is well worth going to the Jordan Pass website ahead of time. It is worth noting that you can buy sometime in advance of the trip that you're planning on making. So this will give you some time to research and make sure that you have that all in order ahead of your trip to Jordan. Now that you're finally in Jordan, you're probably wondering, how do I pay for things? Well, Jordan, just like Turkey, is very much a cash-based society. You can occasionally use your credit card at tourist attractions as well as grocery stores, but in general, you should have enough cash with you to pay for your day-to-day -day expenses. There are banks and ATMs around the major cities, so they're very accessible, and if you haven't brought enough money with you from home, then instead of going to a currency exchange where you could be charged up the wazoo in fees, it's best to just go to a bank, an ATM, use your own debit card and withdraw money that way. Like with a number of countries in this area, including Turkey that we did mention in our last tips and tricks video, the tap water is only good for washing yourself as well as washing things like toothbrushes and everything like that. However, you should not drink it unless you want to get ill. So we don't advise it. The good news though is that like with most countries that do have this kind of situation, they do make bottled water pretty affordable for everybody. So that should be your main source of drinking water under any circumstance. We absolutely loved Jordan. On a personal note, I think it really took me by surprise and it really shouldn't have how welcoming the locals were. And also I had no idea that at least in Amman when we were talking to locals, their English was amazing. So I was absolutely shocked by that and found myself feeling really comfortable, especially in Amman, right off the bat. 
When you're walking through the markets there, a very polite no thank you will absolutely suffice. You don't need to worry about getting harassed in any way. An interesting thing though, is that taxis will honk at you just to see if you want to ride. But again, there's no form of harassment. You just kind of like wave them off and say no thank you and they leave you completely alone. So nothing to worry about. You're gonna have a great time interacting with the locals and just learning about their culture and history and getting all their recommendations. The main way to get around the country once you have landed there is by bus. However, it is worth noting that Jordan is only a small country. Infrastructure outside of the major cities is not very well established. I think it's fair to say. And so as a result, the bus routes are not very frequent. Typically you will only find that if you're planning on going from one place to another, there will only be one bus out and one bus returning every single day. So if you don't want to miss out, you are going to have to end up waking up pretty early in order to get your buses, or you're going to have to wait till quite late in the afternoons to get your buses back. So do bear this in mind. However, the good news is there is an online booking system. You can reserve this in advance. We thoroughly recommend that you do that so that you don't miss out on a spot on any bus to get there. But the good news is as well, they are extremely efficient and they are always on time. So once you do have that ticket, then you're very well taken care of. Jordan was the first of several countries that we visited where the toilet situation was not what we were accustomed to back in Canada and the UK. And what I mean by that is we had to ask our accommodation for toilet paper because it is just common practice for them to not use it and to use a water hose instead. It's basically a bidet that's just built into the toilet. And you would find this at not only hotels, but also obviously public places, even like tourist attractions. So it's just something to be aware of that maybe you wanna take some toilet paper with you if that would make you comfortable when you're going out and exploring the city. But the nice thing is that your hotels do have toilet paper, you just sometimes have to ask for it. The great news about Jordan being a Muslim country, as with, I think, pretty much all of the Muslim countries that we went to, they ensure that places of worship are free. So therefore, if there is any kind of mosque or anything like that that you wish to visit, which we thoroughly recommend that you do, because certainly in some of the countries we've been to, they are incredible, then it is definitely worth noting that they are free. So therefore, if you want a cheap day out and a nice way to spend a couple of hours without spending any kind of money then we definitely recommend it however as ever it is always good to dress appropriately so covering your hair shoulders and knees as a sign of respect to the locals as in most countries prices are more expensive in tourist spots but in Jordan this does include supermarkets However, the supermarkets are still cheaper than going out to a restaurant or a cafe. And the other thing you should be aware of is that sometimes not every single item in the grocery store is marked with a price. So I guess you might have to ask or if you just don't have any budget, go ahead and buy it anyway. <laughs> While we're on the subject of supermarkets, it's probably worth talking about the food. And we found that Jordanian food was absolutely delightful. We're big fans of Middle Eastern food anyway. We have been introduced to quite a lot of it, but even despite that, we were still blown away by just how good the food really was. So obviously you have the likes of your standards. So falafel, hummus, pita, medjool dates as well, which is some of the best in the world, shawarma, tabula, couscous, all of that kind of thing. But we ended up also being introduced to new things, like we'd never had a stuffed falafel before, which was absolutely divine. The fruit juices that are available are both cheap and ripe as well. So no imported fruit or anything like that. It's all freshly grown and it just makes it taste that extra bit better. And alongside hummus for any fans of dips, 
Then we thoroughly recommend Mutterball as well. If you don't know, just check it out. It's well worth it. We found the food to be cheapest in Amman, but that could also be because of how we traveled around the other cities in Jordan. Just to give you a rough idea, a Jordanian coffee should cost no more than one dinar. And when you go out to eat, especially to the local restaurants, as opposed to the more touristy ones, you can get an amazing meal for about five dinar for two people. Now it's time to do some location specific advice. So we'll start with the capital. So when you do arrive in Amman, then thankfully there are buses that take you from the airport into the center of town. However, it is worth noting that there is only one bus route. It will only take you on its set route. It will not deviate. But with each of the stops that it makes, then they are actually quite some distance away from what we would refer to as the city center. So that is definitely worth bearing in mind. You will have to shout out to the driver whenever you need to get off. So I would recommend getting some sort of data package so you do have Google Maps on you at all times for that kind of thing. But also be prepared to get an Uber from wherever you get dropped off to then head to your hotel because it's quite likely that you will need it unless you really fancy walking. Booking the Dead Sea is a little bit of an interesting one. I feel like it's kind of evolved and changed over time, so this might be outdated, but my understanding from when we were there is that there is a public beach that does not have showers. Otherwise, it's not like you can just go to the Dead Sea. You kind of have to book a day pass with one of the resorts or hotels and then you have access to most of their facilities for the day, which include their loungers as well as the showers. Now, the reason I keep bringing up the showers is because of the salt content in the Dead Sea. It is so important that you do shower almost immediately when you get out, not just to protect your skin, but also your bathing suit. Going with a day pass from a hotel or resort you are gonna be paying a little bit of a premium for it, but it does often include an all-you-can-eat lunch as well. In our experience, we found that it was the best value for money. And I think that's the route we would probably advise to go with. When you do come to Petra, then it is definitely the best idea if you're going to be visiting the historical site to get in there as early as you can. The site opens at 6 a.m. and generally that is ahead of any of the paid tour groups or anything like that. So that is one way to beat the crowds. The other thing that is vitally important is that once you get through the rocky section that takes you out to the treasury, which is the most famous building there, then it is basically open desert with a few buildings. So if you really want to avoid the heat as best as you can, then definitely making sure that you get in very early or very late is probably the safest thing because then you won't get caught out and potentially have any health issues there. Also, this is a very rare thing, but unfortunately at Petra, there is something that is probably a scam. That's the best way we could describe it. So when you do come through the gate to enter the site and you're starting to walk down, then you'll be offered a free horse ride to take you to Petra, so they say. However, what this ends up being is you get on a horse that takes you to the entrance to the quite rocky section. And at that point, you're then kicked off the horse and then expected to pay quite a considerable sum for it. I think it was at least 10 dinar in order to do it, which as far as Jordanian prices go is pretty astronomical. And this would all sound great if that section that they're taking you down didn't take about 10 minutes by foot. So it's very much a false economy and you do get misled. So if you do 
get asked if you want a free horse ride, just say no. It's better for you. Booking accommodation at Wadi Rum is also another interesting thing to experience. If you use booking.com, then a lot of the campsites, I think that's what they were referred to, look suspiciously cheap. I'm talking a few dinar or dollars per night. And you think, how can you afford to house me and then feed me? Because they do include dinner and breakfast for that cheap. Now you could go to Wadi Rum and only do that, but where these places make the money is the fact that you're gonna want to go on a tour of Wadi Rum, not just sit at your campsite and do nothing, probably. And so that's why it appears suspiciously cheap is because yes, it does include your accommodation and your food for two meals, but you really are going to be paying them more so that you can go on a tour because each of these campsites run their own tours and they do offer tours of various lengths. Some of them offer a few hours, half day and full day tours. So we ended up finding on booking.com a particular campsite that looked great to us. And I actually contacted them individually and I was able to get a better price on the tour than had I booked it through booking.com. So it is worth it if you can find their website or their email to book directly through them if you want to save even more money on the tour. We ended up getting a half day tour. It was 40 dinar per person. So this is something that's more expensive to do, especially by Jordanian standards, but it is well worth it. So I think that basically the 40 dinar, it included the half day tour, our accommodation, dinner and breakfast, and then the other thing we should note about Wadi Rum is that the bus does not bring you directly to your campsite. It drops you off at the visitor center and you have to arrange pick up and drop off with the campsite itself. Ours charge an extra five dinar for that service. Some of them may include it if you're maybe paying a little bit more per night, who knows, but that's just something that you should keep in mind. And that's about it for this list about the wonderful country of Jordan. We had an amazing time there and we hope that anybody who's watching this video who takes any of these tips and tricks on board also has a great time. However, we do completely understand that what we have provided is not an exhaustive list by any stretch of the imagination. So if you have been to Jordan and have any tips or tricks that you want to pass on, then feel free to leave us a comment. Until next time though, Take care. And keep smiling.